In the previous parts of this tutorial series, we already have mentioned a few differences between sculpted prints and mesh prints. In particular we have learned, mesh prints can have up to 8 textures. You can create your own UV mapping. You can use as many or as few faces as you want. The mesh topology is not fixed. Vertices can be defined with high precision. And you may define your own levels of detail. So, after we have created a nicely optimized kettle, we now create the optimized meshes for the three remaining levels of detail. Let us first check at which distance the next lower level of detail will take effect. We see, the switch happens very soon, and while the camera is still very close to the object, if you examine where exactly the LOD switches happen, then you will see that the highest level of detail is only active when you are very close to the object, while the medium level of detail is visible for quite a while before the low LOD is switched on. So you should take much care about the medium level of detail, where you have to get out most of your model with the least amount of faces. Since I have already optimized my original mesh, I will use it for the medium as well as for the highest level of detail. Hence we will create only two more reduced meshes, one for the low, and another one for the lowest level. But we have to take care about one very important property of meshes. The original textures for the high level of detail will also be used for all other lower levels. Hence we must provide the same UV mapping for all levels of detail, at least if we want them to be texturized in the same way. So let us now see how to create the reduced meshes by using Blender. First, I create a copy of the mesh. Now I delete some of the less important horizontal edge loops, just like I did when I optimized the kettle mesh in the previous part of the tutorial. And like I also have shown in the previous part of this tutorial, I first hide the inner part of the kettle. And from the still visible part of the model, I now delete every second vertical column of vertices. Okay, this is a nice reduction. But we can do it better. By comparison we can see that the most important areas for the visual impression of the object are apparently the edge loops at the top and at the bottom of the kettle. On our reduced mesh, we can see that these loops are made out of 16 edges, where the original object has 32 edges at the same location, and looks much smoother. So let me introduce a nice little trick here. Let us make a second try. We will reduce the horizontal edges just like we did before. But before we actually delete the vertical edge loops, we hide the top edge and the bottom edge, thus keep the object shape untouched on that area. By hiding the top edge of the kettle, I have effectively cut the mesh into two currently not connected parts, and those parts must be treated one by one. Hence I must reduce the edge loops of the inner part and the outer part of the kettle separately. Okay, now we see almost the same amount of faces as before, but compared to the other reduced model, now the rounded shape is fully preserved. A closer inspection shows that we have added a set of triangles at the upper and lower kettle borders. 
and we see that we indeed have created a much smoother shape, which almost looks like the original but has a lot less faces. Although it contains a few more faces we will use this mesh as the low level of detail, and we keep our first try for later when we are going to create the lowest LOD. Now let us examine the UV map of the reduced object. It looks a little bit broken and needs some clean up. Well, as we can see, the UV map of the bottom part of the kettle has not changed. So we will just keep it as it is. But the interior part needs to be fixed. We simply unwrap this part again as we did before. Then we switch to the appropriate image texture and adjust the UV map to the image content. Now we turn to the kettle body itself and first correct the seams. Then we create a cylinder projection unwrap, as we did before. Here we face a problem. Due to the usage of triangles, now the unwrap is no longer exactly rectangular. We can ignore this for now, and proceed as before. To avoid baking problems with overlapping UV faces, we can flip the faces of the inner part upwards, And then adjust the map according to the already existing kettle texture, which we baked in the previous part of the tutorial. Note that when we shift the entire map along the x-axis in the UV image editor, then we see that the texture is actually rotated along the z-axis on the model. So we can always adjust the exact position of the texture by shifting the UV faces on the UV map. We are now finished with the low level of detail mesh, so let us now proceed with the lowest level of detail. In principle we do not make anything different here, again we reduce the mesh such that the shape of our object remains recognizable. I will reuse our first attempt to create the low LOD, because it can be reduced faster. The lowest level of detail is only activated when the camera is far away from the object. Hence we do not need to take care about the details, and we can make some dramatic reductions.
and in our case, we end up with just 32 faces. You should always remind that on this lowest level of detail each face is very expensive regarding prim equivalence. Hence when we do a very radical reduction in face count here, we will see a dramatic reduction of streaming costs. Now it is time to test our work with the mesh importer. And here you can see that I have used the original and optimized mesh for the high level and for the medium level of detail. You also can see that preserving the upper and lower edge of the kettle makes it look very convenient in the low level of detail. Now let us check what prim equivalent we will get for this mesh. As we already have experienced in the first part of this tutorial, again we see that the physics weight is by far the highest value in the set. So let us go to the physics tab, and there tell the importer to use the lowest LOD for physics. Then we analyze it, and simplify it. And now the resulting physics weight has gone down to a reasonable value. But now we cannot place anything into the kettle. If we wanted to do that, we can do that by revisiting the importer. And in the physics tab only analyze the shape. Please note that the display of the physics costs is misleading here. We still see only the costs for the convex hull. And when we raise the object, then it will automatically use the convex hull. Only when we go to the feature tag, we can switch to physics type prim. Then finally our physics mesh gets into action. I am now at the end of this part of the kettle quest. All about physics and server weight will be found in the next part of this series. Until then, have a nice day.